Right? So let's look at infinitesimal element of the fluid in a duct. Okay. Let's look at what's going to happen on fluid. Okay, this is dx. The force acting on this side is a P, that is a pressure, and the area, that is PS. Okay? That is a force acting on X. And there is a force acting on X plus DX. Okay? I'm just writing that this is the force acting on X, and this is the force acting on X plus DX, and the P would be different with this P. Okay, in fact, this P, we can write P plus DP DX, just using Taylor expansion. And S is constant because we are handling one dimensional case. Okay. This force imbalance will induce the motion of this fluid particle. Okay. What would be the mass of this fluid particle? Okay, that I can write, that is rho times S and dx. That is the mass. What about the acceleration? Acceleration of this fluid particle. I can say the acceleration is du dx. Okay, now u is changing with respect to time as well as with respect to space because that is compressible fluid. Right? So infinitesimal element, if I compress this, this fluid can be accelerated with respect to time as well as this fluid will move a certain amount. Okay? So that means I have two components of sorry, you did two type of acceleration. So in fact, this is okay. the force term, the so-called convection term. Okay. Right. So another acceleration we can see because we are handling the fluid that is compressible. And we normally call this total acceleration, or we call DDT is a total derivative, or material derivative. Okay. So now I can write that the relation between pressure and the velocity as following. So I have PS, that is a force acting on x equal x, and because I am using coordinate x like that, I to put minus because the force is acting over there and in this direction. Reason? The pressure, by definition, is a force acting on normal to the surface. That is a pressure, right? 
So pressure is always acting on normal to the surface. Okay? That is the definition of pressure. It's nothing force acting like this. So that is minus Ps x plus dx. That has to be equal to du dt and I have rho s dx over here. And this is Ps x plus dps dx dx and that is so we, we have minus dp ds s dx is equal to rho s dx du dt therefore what I have is the relation between the pressure gradient that is dp dx is equal to, has to be balanced by rho du dt that we call general Euler equation. So Euler's equation essentially describes the relation between force and response. Or in acoustic terminology, the Euler's equation expresses the relation between pressure and velocity. Okay? Okay? There's a relation between pressure and velocity. That is the Euler equation. Then, the pressure, what is the pressure in this case? Okay. For example, can you, can you feel some pressure here? What kind of pressure you can feel? The so one is the ambient pressure that I write P0. That is ambient pressure or quasian pressure. In other words, when there is no fluctuating pressure, which I call acoustic pressure, right? So P prime is acoustic pressure, or often we call it excess pressure. to emphasize that this is, sort of, this is sort of additional pressure to ambient pressure or quasient pressure. Okay? Maybe, uh, can we open the, the other side too? So this is Euler's equation. Can he then solve this? Oh, unfortunately this is function of u, and there is a multiplication term, therefore this is not linear with respect to u. So, it's rather difficult compared with what we have, the wave equation before. <laughs>